To wrap our legendary weapons segment up, I'm going to be doing a power weapon tier list today where I uh, combine all 97 power weapons from the past five tier lists. Wow, that's crazy. We did five tier lists for power weapons. Yes, but I'm going to combine all the every single weapon from all of those videos into just this video. As you can see, I've got all 97 power weapons lined up here in this massive, massive array, and we are going to go ahead and try to squeeze them into five tiers. Now you may notice something about this tier list, it is a little bit different from my previous tier list. I've changed the A tier to be activity dependent, B to be build dependent, C to be possible alternative, and D to be never used. So when it comes to endgame content, I like to categorize weapons I think more in this regard, rather than like, you know, universally good versus, you know, decent overall, that sort of thing is a little bit more vague. And I think uh, I can be a little bit more harsh, which is how I want to scale things in this sort of tier list going down the line. Um, although, you know, this tier list system may not end up uh, going as well, so we may switch it back. Um, we'll see how it goes. It's a learning process. Um, but that being said, there's a couple more notes I want to cover before we get right into this tier list. Uh, first of all, like I said before with my special weapon tier list, I heard some of your feedback. I was a little bit dissatisfied with that one because obviously I was in a bit of a rush. We had over like 100 weapons to go through, so I had a... <laughs> I had a bit of a tall task, um, but like I said, this power weapon tier list is going to be more harsh and more subjective than the previous power weapon tier list because I'm pretty much just analyzing, you know, if a machine gun is S tier but machine guns aren't very good overall in PvE, then you might obviously not see a machine gun in S tier. So that's going to depend. We will cross that bridge when we get to it. And obviously I'm also going to be a lot more subjective here because a lot of my considerations when ranking power weapons as a whole are more to do with am I likely to use this weapon rather than let's analyze all the perks compared to all the other machine guns or whatever and you know figure out whether it's S tier or A tier. Um, besides that, you know, like I said, this tier list might not follow the other tier list perfectly, right? I might place a weapon a little bit higher than another weapon um, in another tier list, so that might throw people off. Again, I have to go through 97 weapons, so things are not going to be perfectly aligned with what I have on my main sheets tier list for individual weapons. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I'm going to say. Uh, the only difference between this tier list and the previous one is I'm going to be a little bit more careful, and I also have the help of my spreadsheet to my right, rather than opening each individual weapon or just talking about it off the dome. I have a brief summary of what every weapon has going for it, and as well as where I tiered it, so I can kind of discuss it a little bit more uh, in that respect. Okay, so let's start with the front here. These are, I think, almost completely randomized. I tried my best to randomize them, so that's going to be a little bit of fun. And uh, let's start with Terminus Horizon. So Terminus Horizon, if we go ahead and look at it in the machine gun list, it is in fact worse than Song of Ir Ute in terms of just being a demo uh, machine gun. It has, you know, a high impact frame, which is slightly worse. It's not craftable, so it doesn't have enhanced perks. And of course, it doesn't have Curse Thrall, doesn't have Bait and Switch, doesn't have Sword Logic. It has, you know, just, just some decent perks, right? It's not bad. Um, it's basically an alternative to Song of Ir Ute. So I'm going to put it in the C tier because that's where it belongs. You would never use it over Song of Your Ute if you have a good Song of Your Ute. Okay, next up we have Quick Fang. Quick Fang's just never used. I don't really need to show you why it's never used. It has no damage perk. It has one of the, you know, less favorable uh, sword archetypes. So it's just never used. Let's move on. Shattered Cypher, that's a void rapid fire machine gun uh, from Season of the Splicer, I believe. Um, I don't think this thing is pretty much uh, ever used. I'm just gonna put it in the never used column or in the never used row. It's never used. Okay, let's keep going to Thin Precipice. Thin Precipice is a Vortex Frame Strand Sword, and um, I don't think this is ever used in endgame content either. I'm just going to dump it here, and uh, we'll leave it at that. Okay, Archon's Thunder. That is a solar high impact frame uh, machine gun from Iron Banner. I believe that's right over here. Yeah, this thing doesn't really have uh, anything going for it. It's like an auto rampage machine gun. I wouldn't even, like technically I guess you could put it in possible alternative, but I'm not going to. Uh, I'm just going to leave it like, I don't know, somewhere around here. Uh, I'm not even going to, again, I tried ordering within tiers last time. I'm not going to bother. D and C tier, we're just going to let them fill up. I'm not going to try to order them. Uh, okay, Heavy GL next up, we got Cataphract. Um, Cataphract is not universally good, but I would say it is activity dependent. So you're going to get to see here what I mean by when I'm trying to distinguish between the A and B tiers. Um, a tier is more like the weapon is very good, just generally speaking, but you may want to use it only in certain circumstances. Whereas B tier is, uh, the weapon isn't necessarily good on its own, but um, 
if your build allows for it, it might be more favorable than other options. So for a really good example would be like a weapon with that specializes because it has repulsor brace and destabilizing rounds. Now that sort of weapon, you're probably not going to put it in A tier, but you're more likely to put it in B tier because it synergizes with a certain build type. So the B tier is probably not going to be as full. You're likely going to see a lot of, you know, the, a very top heavy, a very bottom heavy list. But, um, you know, let's keep going, and uh, I hope that kind of explains the difference between A and B tier. So, Cataphract is a great example. Cataphract's not build dependent, it's entirely activity dependent, because some bosses and some encounters, you have a few enough players that Galahorn isn't worth it, or you have a boss where a heavy jail just makes more sense. So, in that regard, that's why uh, Cataphract put it, you know, we put it in the A tier, it's not in the B tier, not in the S tier. So, that was a bit long, but I, I hope that cleared things up. Okay, next up we have, I believe this is uh, Honor's Edge. Honor's Edge, yes. Honor's Edge. Now, the thing about swords is that obviously I did tier them this way, but swords are very close together in terms of like viability. And so you're pretty much not going to use any sword that's not close to perfect. So you can see the swords up here, you know, they're, they're very good. They're craftable, surrounded, adaptives, whatever. Um, Honor's Edge, you know, it's decent. It has Relentless Surrounded, but are you are you ever going to use this over Bequest? Like, not really. Not really. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put it just in the D tier, because it doesn't have Enhanced Surrounded. It doesn't have Increased Impact. I'm just going to put it in the D tier, because you're never going to use this thing. Um, all right, next up, we have another Heavy GL. We have Interference 6. <clears throat> so Interference 6, um, I'm just going to say never used. Yeah, it's, it's just never used in Endgame PvE. <clears throat> There's like no reason. It's not even an alternative. Full court sucks. Okay. Uh, next up, we have Wendigo. Uh, Wendigo, I would say uh, it is one of the best Cascade Jails out there. It is an adaptive frame, and it does share a surge with Cloud Strike and Fourth Horseman, notably Fourth Horseman, which makes it kind of a standout. Uh, that being said, I will. I'm gonna put it in build dependent. I'm gonna put it in build dependent. Now, typically when you think build, you think like armor exotic, like Jer Falcon, Sun Racers, whatever. Um, when I say build here, I'm more so referring to a damage build. So what your other weapons are. So if your other weapons are, for example, Supremacy and Horseman, then you're not gonna be using something like Wendigo. Or sorry, you're not gonna be using something like Cataphract. You would rather use something like Wendigo. However, I would say that sort of build is niche enough that. It doesn't deserve to be in the A tier where Cataphract is. If you ever need a heavy gel on a boss, Cataphract is definitely the way to go along with something like Caraxis uh, compared to, you know, the B tier here where, you know, Wendigo is more like a cascade rotation, which is much more situational and requires the input of your other weapons to really be effective. Okay, let's move on. I believe this is Nasreddin. Nasreddin? Uh, that is indeed Nasreddin. It has Relentless, Surrounded, Whirlwind, and Field Tested. Um, that's actually not bad. That's actually not bad. Um, but given, yeah, given the circumstances, again, I don't think you would ever really use this thing, just period. I'm gonna just slap it in the D tier and we'll move on. Um, Bequest is just better in every way, massive charge rate, you know, um, enhanced around it, etc. I don't really need to speak much more on that. Uh, let's keep going. Okay, next up we have, I believe this is a fine memorial from the moon. Yes, that is an arc adaptive machine gun, uh, and it has sub demo, and it has field demo, it has sub adjunct sub one for all, so that's actually not bad. Um, I think it would be probably bottom of C tier, maybe top of D tier. Uh, I'm going to put it in top of D tier. It's, it's, you know, I don't think anybody would use a fine memorial over something like, um, something like Song of Your Ute, uh, mostly because, you know, sub is not that useful on a demo machine gun because you're reloading by throwing a grenade. And, um, some of these other perks are just, they don't, you know, really hold a candle to, to Song of Your Ute or even Terminus Horizon, which is like right above it, right? Demo adjunct is a lot better than having demo in your fourth column. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that in the never used row and we'll move on to our first caster frame sword out of two. That's going to be Sola Scar. Sola Scar isn't used for shit. It is a caster frame and we know where caster frames go in, uh, in, in today's meta. Uh, not in the end game folder, that's for sure. Okay, next up we have Heavy GL number, what is it, three? Number four, number four. So yeah, this is crowd pleaser. This has no damage perk. This has no damage perk. And so I'm just gonna put in the D tier. Uh, Seventh Seraf Saw is next. Uh, that's a classic machine gun. Yeah, it's an arc high impact machine gun. Uh, it has auto firing and field firing. That being said, I don't think Saw really has anything that sets it above the rest. Uh, there's no reason why you would even consider this to be an alternative to the machine guns that we're gonna probably put in the A or B tier. So I'm just gonna put that in the D tier. Uh, next up we have Cry Mutiny. So Cry Mutiny, um, it's Demo Vorpal, which is like okay, but Vorpal is a 10% damage perk. Um, some people do use this for Vault Ad Clear in Last Wish and you know other Ad Clear encounters where you want a grenade, but that is so extremely situational. Uh, I wouldn't even call that activity dependent. Um, I would say, uh, yeah, mm, 
yeah, G ad clear is just typically not something, not even typically, ad clear is just not something I would recommend uh, you do in endgame content for GLs. So I'm just going to put this in the D tier and leave it at that. Um, next up, we have swords. Swords, uh, throne cleaver. Throne cleaver is basically a version of crown splitter, except it has enhanced surrounded and then it has no relentless strikes, which is kind of sad, kind of a big deal, unfortunately, for throne cleaver. Um, I'm going to say it's an alternative. It's uh, aggressive frames are pretty decent. Uh, in more of like a roaming sort of activity, which, you know, I don't really recommend swords for roaming, but in some, you know, circumstances like a roaming sword activity, Throne Cleaver would be pretty good. Um, but that's really all the good things I have to say about this. I'm considering dropping this thing to D tier, but I'm going to leave it in C for now, and uh, we'll see how that sits when we start dumping more weapons into this tier list. Okay, let's talk about Recurrent Impact next. Uh, recurrent Impact, um, pretty solid. You know, it's a, it's a rapid fire stasis machine gun with land tank. Land tank is very, very nice. Uh, I don't think any other machine gun even has land tank. Yeah. So it's the only machine gun of its kind that has land tank. Now, are you going to pick this thing over some of the, you know, SS tier uh, machine guns that are, you know, way up at the top here uh, just because it has land tank? Probably not. Um, because, you know, in terms of its other perks, subsistence, it has enhanced subsistence, which is really nice. It has one for all, which is pretty decent. Um, the other perks you're probably not going to be looking at too much. Um, I would say this is definitely like the definition of like a C tier weapon. Um, I wouldn't consider I wouldn't consider having like headstone on a rapid fire machine gun to be like even I don't know I would I wouldn't say that shifts it into B tier maybe but we'll see how the rest of this list pans out I might readjust it and put it in the B tier but I think you know top of C tier makes sense it's a great alternative uh, easily accessible you know craftable um, very easy to get. Uh, if you played during that season, and uh, yeah, just the solid overall machine gun. Okay, next up we have fixed odds. Fixed odds, in my opinion, is quite overrated. It has a, it's a high impact, which means its stats are mediocre, and it has field prep, but no, no, no form of reload perk. Right? If it had demo in the first column, or auto in the first column, or sub in the first column. Uh, and it's craftable, so it has the enhanced versions of these perks too. It would be, you know, excusable, but unfortunately, um, I, I say, in my opinion, this thing is worse than Avalanche overall for QOL, and certainly worse than Unwavering Duty. Um, I, I, if I'm going to put Avalanche in this tier list in the C, I'm probably going to put Fixed Odds in the D. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave that here. Um, you know, we might move it to the bottom of C, but we'll see how things go. Once again. Uh, thermal erosion that's easily a d tier weapon um you know if if i'm putting fixed odds in the d tier i'm definitely putting thermal erosion in the d tier um yeah that's pretty much all i have to say let's keep going corrective measure now corrective measure i'm not gonna put in the d tier for those of you that are <laughs> freaking out right now uh corrective measure is pretty good i did put it in the s tier uh in my opinion corrective measure is kind of like song of Irute, except for you have to jump through less hoops but you get less of a gain uh someone in my chat kind of put it that way the other day i thought that was a pretty apt description corrective measure is basically yeah it's like a demo machine gun except its perks lend themselves more to just general gameplay and just using a machine gun naturally whereas song of your ute if you want to get full use out of it you need some melee kills for cursed thralls uh you need to be shooting all three of your weapons for bait and switch you kind of have to be playing with some level of intention to really get the most out of Song of Your Ute. Whereas Corrective Measure, perks like One For All and Adrenaline Junkie and Firefly are very brain dead. They're very straightforward. You're going to be doing, meeting the conditions for those perks regardless of how you are playing with the machine gun. So I'm going to go ahead and put Corrective Measure probably in the B tier um, because, you know, it does work west with, uh, sorry, not west. It does work best with a grenade build. And uh, I do have to say, the difference between normal subsistence and enhanced subsistence, it's kind of a mile. It's kind of big, I would say. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to give it too much credit for having subsistence for general play. I'm going to say this is definitely strictly a demo machine gun. And for, you know, for that, for those purposes, it does pretty well. Um, I might even consider moving it up to, to A tier, but we'll get to that when we get to that. So next up, we have Marsilion C. Now, Marsilion C is pretty good. Um, I've actually reshifted it ever since we spoke about Heavy GLs last to put it in the B tier um, because I kind of failed to account for the fact that Regnant also has Envious Assassin and Cascade Point despite being an adaptive, even if it has a worse base mag size than most adaptives that our meta do. Now, that being said, uh, Marsilion is still pretty decent. And for whatever reason, if you are on Solar this season for Mono, um, I guess it'd be pretty decent in that regard over something like Regnant. That being said, like I said before, I'm not considering seasonal mods right now when I am talking about an overall tier list like this. So that's not going to give Marsilion any extra brownie points in my system. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and put Marsilion probably in the C tier. 
yeah, probably right about here. I think Marsilian can uh, hang out in the C tier uh, because it is a rapid fire frame GL, which prevents it from being uh, top tier or even in one of these top three tiers. Okay, moving on. Swords, we have Geodetic HSM. Now, Geodetic HSM, this is actually one of the swords that I'm considering uh, shifting up a tier. Uh, I was told recently that Nadir Focus actually allows you to infinite sword fly uh, with a relatively decent amount of momentum with no sword ammo on, on a Titan, which um, that is kind of situational, but for exploration purposes, for movement purposes, that's actually not the worst thing in the world. I actually didn't know that. So shout out to the commenter that pointed that out. That's a pretty cool discovery. Um, I think Geodetic in general, you know, if we're going to consider movement related activities end game, which I do, um, I think it deserves to be above the D tier. Um, I would say even maybe above the C tier because it is kind of build dependent. Um, there are some situations where Nadir Focus and that kind of origin trait would be better to have than Eager Edge. Um, now they are very rare, granted, so this thing might drop into the C tier, but I'm willing to put it in the B tier for now. Alright, what do we have next? Okay, that is a heavy GL that is very grotesque looking. Uh, oh, that's Love and Death. Ah, okay, I thought Love and Death looked a bit different than that. Anyways. Love and Death is another full court GL, so I don't think I need to say much about that. It is bad. Uh, Behringer's Memory, again, no damage perk, bad. Um, what is this? What uh, heavy GL is this one? It is Swarm of the Raven. Okay, so Swarm of the Raven is kind of in a similar scenario as Marsilion. I'm going to just go ahead and put it right next to Marsilion. Um, it doesn't have Envious, but instead it has Auto and Clown. Auto is arguably, uh, possibly a better perk to have on a Cascade GL than Envious in some circumstances, so I think putting them right next to each other here is just fine. Um, but like I said before, I think I said this in the Heavy GL video, don't be fooled, rapid fire Heavy GLs despite their archetype, uh, despite their higher fire rate, you might think that they do higher DPS and have lower total damage than adaptives. This is not true. Remember with heavy jails, rapids actually have less total damage as well as having less uh, lower DPS. So that's why we're going to put rapids in the C tier rather than in the B, A, or S tier. Okay, moving on, we have, I believe that is our friend Quasiphon5 from Gambit. It is. Um, this thing, uh, the only thing special about this machine gun is that it has destabilizing rounds. I don't think any other machine gun in the game has destabilizing rounds, so that is pretty interesting. However, this thing does lack, um, any form of automatic reload perk. Uh, and it has wildcard though, which is also pretty unique on a machine gun. Um, so yeah, I think this thing is... Ah, oh, man, I don't... I don't know if I'd put it... Hmm, this one's a bit of a tough one. This one's a bit of a tough one. I guess in some regards, this has some aspects to it that are unique and are arguably useful. Um, I'm going to put at the bottom of C tier. I'm going to put at the bottom of C tier. Yeah, I really, mm, I don't know. That lack of a reload perk is really, really stinging me right now. Really stinging me. I think we're going to put in the D tier. I mean, it, like, granted, we put fixed odds above this thing, right? I, I think, I think it makes sense for it to be in the D tier. I don't think you would, it's quirky. It's definitely in the realm of quirky, but like you would probably never use this as, as an endgame player over something like corrective or commemoration, like the titans, the absolute um, beasts of the machine gun class. Okay, next up we have, I believe that's chain of command. Yeah, chain of command. Okay, this is like the definition, the definition of an A tier weapon. Yeah, definition of an A tier weapon, uh, or sorry, not A tier, rather C tier weapon, possible alternative, because this thing is basically, it does the job of a machine gun, has demo adjunky, it's an adaptive frame, and uh, that's all you need to know. It's like, it's just solid. It's just solid. This is like the most vanilla machine gun in the game. If you were to pick out a random machine gun and say, hey, new player, you know, this is a machine gun that you can use and not have to really think about anything. Probably this one, right? This one is super straightforward, has the a solid base roll that you're really looking for in machine guns. So um, yeah, not much else to say about that. It is a possible alternative. Uh, and that's why we put it in that tier. Okay. Next up, we have, I believe that is just in case. Yeah, that's just in case. Relentless Whirlwind. Um, yeah, I don't have much to say about this guy. We're going to put it in the D tier. We're going to put it right in the D tier. All right, let's go to... What is this guy? Retrofit Escapade. How could I forget? Now, Retrofit Escapade, um, I'm going to be honest with you. No one uses this. No one uses this in, in endgame content that I've seen. Um, yeah, of, of, the, of the good endgame players that I know... Uh, even, even when they're using machine guns in something like a GM or for ad clear, uh, certainly not for boss damage, as I'm sure a lot of you know by now. Um, yeah, this thing just doesn't really have a place. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put it in the D tier. Um, it's never really used in endgame content. I wouldn't even consider it an, an alternative. Yeah, I, you know, corrective measure is, uh, you know, 
the void alternative to commemoration if you want to consider it that way. Okay, well, let's move on. Let's talk about Qlims Terminus. Uh, not, not surprising to anyone, I'm putting this in the D tier. No one ever uses this thing in endgame content. Um, you know, it is a high impact with headstone, so it is a little bit more accurate and easy to get headstone procs off of with recurrent. But uh, in the current sandbox right now, making headstones out of, you know, ads that die is not on the top priority of any endgame player's, you know, priority list. So I don't think that's a selling point to really put uh, Q limbs anywhere above the D tier. Okay, next up we have Tarnation, which is uh, a, a GL with no um, relevant boss DPS perk. Um, yeah, so D tier. All right, next up we have, I believe that's Night Terror from the Moon. Yeah, Night Terror from the Moon. So this has a Relentless, Surrounded, and Whirlwind. Um, that does give it an edge over uh, some of the other options even in the S tier, because Bequest does not have Whirlwind. Right, and Vorpal is certainly worse than Whirlwind, and um, you know some of these other swords are just not the right archetype. Uh, that being said, are you ever using you know this sword over something like even like Caretaker uh, or even something like you know the other half? I really just don't think so. I really just don't think so. Um, now, if I'm gonna put Nas Red in the D tier, I should probably also put Night Terror in the D tier. But now that I'm thinking about it, if you don't have Bequest, right, and you're trying to do endgame content, like for example, Crota, and I don't know, I feel like you just use Lament. <laughs> I feel like you just use Lament. I mean, oh man, that's tough. That's really tough. Because technically speaking, Relentless Whirlwind Adaptives do higher damage than Lament, but uh, mm, is it enough? I don't think so. I really don't think so. I'm going to put Night Terror in the D tier with Nas Redden. Uh, I might reconsider that later on, you know, down the list, but I'm really going to put this in the D tier for now. Uh, you'll also notice, by the way, guys, that um, I'm being a lot more harsh. I'm really focusing on endgame content in this tier list. You're going to see way more weapons in the D tier than probably the special weapon tier list, because I want to I want to be as instructive as possible, as constructive as possible when it comes to newer players and just being able to look at this tier list, look at the top tiers and be like, yeah, those are the weapons that I want to be going for, looking for when it comes to endgame content, the non-compromised weapons. Okay, uh, let's keep going. We have uh, another sword, Falling Guillotine. Falling Guillotine uh, is also, now this might get me in hot water, is also never used in endgame content by players that know what they are doing. Because Falling Guillotine, number one, is a vortex frame. Vortex frames chew through their ammo like it is paper. I've said this before. A lot of people in my comment section on the sword video and other related videos have said, why don't you talk about Falling Guillotine? You know, why did you hate on Falling Guillotine? It's uh, such a legend, such a classic. Falling Guillotine, guys, it's a vortex frame sword. Vortex frames have amongst the lower end of the DPS in this entire system, um, if we're talking about the, the sword economy, and they consume 6 ammo, 6 ammo on the heavy attack. So not only are you compromising on your DPS versus something like an adaptive or an aggressive or a lightweight with an aerial combo, you're doing lower DPS and you are spending more ammo to do it. So there is no reason you should ever use Fallen Guillotine, and if you do want to use a Vortex Frame Sword for whatever reason, for Whatever reason you you manage to cook up to use six ammo every heavy attack to do less damage than most of your other swords. If for whatever you, reason you want to do that, use Death's Razor. Use Death's Razor. Um, and if you're on a Titan or if you're on a Hunter, you have class specific swords on those classes as well that will outperform Falling Guillotine. So there's no reason to use Falling Guillotine. We're gonna leave it in the D tier and we're gonna call it at that and we're gonna move on. Okay, Quick Fang. Now Quick Fang. Um, that's not Quick Fang. Sorry, Gold Tusk. Uh, same same frame. Uh, Gold Tusk, um, while it does have a more relevant damage perk than Quick Fang, Quick Fang has On Guard, Gold Tusk has Whirlwind, which will last you for an entire phase. Uh, unfortunately for Gold Tusk, after doing some repeated revisiting to testing, um, it does much less damage than I originally calculated for. Um, that being said, if you do manage to find a boss or perhaps champions where that light heavy aerial combo can come into play, uh, it's not horrible. You know, it does similar DPS. Um, slightly less than Bequest with Enhanced Surrounded, uh, and doesn't require Surrounded. However, this is very contingent on the fact that you can hit frame-perfect light aerial combos, and the fact that the enemy that you are hitting with that combo will not cause you to miss heavy attacks, or go through the enemy, or just not hit the enemy at all. So, very, very, very situational, and even in those situations, it doesn't do enough damage to really justify its existence. Um, I'm gonna just go out and say it, yeah. It's probably in the D tier. I might move it up a little bit, but I don't think if I were a new player going into endgame content, 
Am I going to tell a new player, hey, you should really go after Gold Tusk because it's an important endgame weapon to have? That would be lying. So, you know, it's quirky. It's cool. It's a ninja sword. I wanted to love it. Unfortunately, it's just not what it is all cooked up to be. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Death's Razor, I mean, if Fallen Guillotine is in the bottom tier for being a Vortex frame, Death's Razor is going to suffer the same fate. We're going to leave it in the D tier. Not much comment to say about that. It's basically a craftable Fallen Guillotine. Um, yeah, there you go. Right there in the C tier, in the sword tier list as well. Okay, next up we have Caraxus's Distress. Now, Caraxus does place in the A tier in the Heavy Jail tier list, but where does it place in the overall tier list? This thing is the highest... Um, Highest total damage, highest DPS, rapid fire frame heavy jail in the game because it has envious and enhanced surrounded. Also, it has harmonic resonance, uh, which could be useful in some situations. Like, for example, I think if people are going to speedrun Simuma again, you're likely going to use Caraxis, I think, on that boss. Although, you know, don't quote me on that. Speedrun strategies haven't developed since the Pack Hunter nerf, so I could be wrong. But um, Caraxis is definitely a GL worth looking at for certain bosses where your fire team is under the minimum required size for Gallahorn to be effective. So I'm going to go ahead and put Caraxis. Um, ah, I don't I don't even know if I put it in the same tier as Wendigo. I think maybe we're going to put it in the C tier. Yeah, I think maybe in the C tier, like somewhere around here, somewhere at the top of C tier. Um, actually, no, I'll put it in the B tier. I'll put it in the B tier. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll consider again these tiers are the tier descriptions are not perfect but i think uh, i think it deserves to be in the same tier of wendigo as wendigo um because i guess surrounded is kind of like a build kind of coping here on my description but um i don't think it really does i don't think caraxis is an alternative um because it is the premier choice in certain circumstances okay moving on we have memory interdict this is basically a pvp heavy jail i'm not even gonna bother talking about it um, Eliatic Principle, this is one of the worst machine guns in the game, if not the worst, I believe, in my LMG tier list. Yeah, it's the worst LMG in the game. No reason to ever use this. Boom. Commemoration. Okay, now this is a tough one, because some people were asking me, you know, are you going to put a machine gun in the S tier? And if I'm being honest with you, machine guns are good. Bungie has buffed them, you know, past the point of usability. They're quite good, right? Uh, if you need a machine gun, you need a machine gun, and they do excellent at whatever um, they are you know, executing whatever task they're executing, uh, precise ad clear, very, very good at that. However, um, in terms of end game content, if we're counting up all the things that people do in end game content, machine guns don't really appear in most of them, to be honest with you. Um, because just generally speaking, the need for precise long range ad clear can be covered by other weapons and abilities. And in the places where it can't, that's really the only places, you know, those are really, really the only places where machine guns really come out to play. So uh, I think I'd be kind of being a little disingenuous if I said commemoration is universally good in all endgame activities, because realistically speaking, using a machine gun in some endgame activities is just not the optimal play, right? So I, I think I think I'm just gonna put it, slap it at the top of A tier. Very, very solid machine gun for obvious reasons. I think we're gonna put it, you know, at the top of A tier where it belongs. Very, very solid option. Um, yeah, nothing much to say about that. I don't think anyone's going to be complaining about commemoration. Okay, uh, we have Temptation's Hook, Caster Frame. Just going to put it next to Sola. No need to talk about that anymore. Um, Crown Splitter. Okay, so Crown Splitter, like I mentioned, is basically a more ammo-friendly version of Throne Cleaver that is not craftable. So, you know, if Throne Cleaver had Relentless Strikes, you probably just would never use Crown Splitter. Uh, because Throne Cleaver is just better in every other way. That being said, dude, I don't know why they didn't give Relentless Strikes to Throne Cleaver. I mean, if you just look, just look at my sword spreadsheet, right? Every single sword on this list has Relentless Strikes except one sword, and that is Throne Cleaver. And it's, it's one of the swords that would have benefited from it the most as well. So it's just a real shame. Um, Relentless Strikes is a relatively sizable increase to total damage. I have no idea why out of the... 26 non-sunset swords in the game they decided to not give relentless strikes to one of the swords that is actually relevant um but you know a bungee does what bungee maketh so you know crown splitter is probably going to go somewhere around throne cleaver somewhere here and uh we're just going to leave it at that very unfortunate but it is what it is um and next up we have i believe that's blast batu yeah this is basically like a, a pvp question mark ad clear question mark heavy gl so d tier d tier right 
Um, next up, we have Abide the Return. Abide the Return is another of the 200 million Buzz Lightyear copy swords there are with Relentless Whirlwind that are adaptives that come from the pre-Year 4 era of Bungie producing swords that are basically decorative variations of each other. So I'm going to go ahead and put Abide the Return in the D tier. There's no reason to ever use this thing outside of maybe a, a fashion statement or something. Okay, we have, uh, this is Outrageous Fortune. I don't even need to look. This is basically a, a very old heavy jail with no relevant perks. So we're going to put in the D tier. This is the Swarm. The Swarm, I wouldn't even, you know, most people hate this machine gun and for good reason. D tier, um, don't even need to talk about the perks. Okay, Song of Air Ute. This is another interesting one. So Song of Air Ute, um, it's, it's got a lot of good things going for it, right? If you kind of just lined up all the interesting, unique, and powerful qualities about this machine gun uh, in a row, it would make for a pretty long list, right? It has enhanced demo, it's an adaptive frame, it's craftable, uh, it has reconstruction, it has sword logic, it has bait and switch, it has cascade point, it has cursed thrall, it has all these things going for it. But if you add them all up to make a complete picture, it's still a little bit of a, uh, you know, it just doesn't have that kind of brain dead easy application of perks that commemoration has. Commemoration is the type of gun where you can put it in the hands of any player playing any build in any activity that a machine gun is good in and it will excel. Song of Ryu kind of requires a little bit of investment uh, into your build. So I think I'm going to put it in the B tier. It's kind of, you know, it, it's it's kind of like, you know, it's a corrective measure. I'm just going to put them in the B tier. Requires you to be running a grenade build. And if you're running reconstruction, um, you know, that's that's fine as well. Um, but you know, the, the perks are for reconstruction, like just general slaying ads are not as good as something like killing tally, right? Sword logic is a little bit worse than killing tally. So it is an alternative in that regard. Um, yeah. So let's move on. We have plank stride next plank stride. Um, just to give you guys a preview. I know a lot of you were saying, you know, I should have given this thing some credit for being a melee centric, um, Machine gun, which doesn't really exist in this game. You don't really have machine guns with grave swash in this game. So I guess that's kind of, I, I gave it its flowers. You know, I moved it up a tier. I gave it some points for that. I put them over some machine guns that uh, I didn't put it over before. That being said, uh, it's still not going to go above the D tier. <laughs> it's still not going to go above the D tier. Um, there is no reason to ever use this thing when the S tier machine guns exist, uh, really for any reason. So it, I wouldn't even consider it to be like a, a possible alternative. It is just worse in many ways compared to a lot of the machine guns that come above it. So let's move on to Apex Predator. Now Apex Predator, I don't think I need to say much. Rockets are the dominant force even after the Pack Hunter rework in boss DPS scenarios. And Apex Predator is good in pretty much everything. It's good at doing damage to pretty much all the raid bosses. It's good at doing damage to all the GM bosses, all the champions, all, all the things. So we're just, we're going to put in the S tier. We're going to put in the S tier. Um, yeah, not much to say about that. S tier. All right, next up we have Ascendancy. Ascendancy is, I wouldn't even consider it to be a possible alternative. If you wanted a possible alternative for a new player to pick up uh, when it comes to a rocket that has good QOL, good for, you know, baby's first GM, baby's first raid boss DPS, um, there are much better rockets than Ascendancy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and slap that in the D tier. No one uses this thing in endgame PvE because it is a precision frame with no good reload perk. Okay, next up we have, uh, I believe that is negative space. I was about to say empty space, and I was like, that's definitely not the right word. Uh, negative space. So negative space, uh, again, carbon copy of Nasreddin and Night Terror. It's just solar. So I'm going to go ahead and put it where I put those swords in the D tier. Okay, moving on, we have Unwavering Duty. Now, Unwavering Duty, I put this thing in the S tier. This thing is basically like if you want a solar machine gun for Empyrean extension or there's a solar surge going on, this thing is basically um, a bit of a specialist, right? Commemoration is more of a, hey, I want to hold down my trigger and just like destroy all the enemies in front of me. Song of Your Ute is more of a, you know, demo, melee ability, melee kill, grenade kill, that sort of machine gun, ability restoration. And Unwavering is basically the solar machine gun. It has incandescent, it has sub auto, it has KT, it's just not craftable. So it's pretty good. Um, I would say, I would say it is definitely worse than Commemoration in a lot of respects. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in the build dependent uh, row, mostly because if you're using this machine gun, you're probably using it over commemoration strictly because of a surge or because you want incandescent. So that is enough to make me say that it's it should be below commemoration in that respect. OK, uh, let's go to bad omens next. Bad omens, bad omens. A lot of people were surprised by how high I put this thing. I mean, it's 
the best one of the two best archetypes for rockets in the game and it has auto and cluster which is like you know it's fine it's fine auto and cluster is good and what this thing gets yeah that gets 10 reserves yeah it's like fine cluster is not horrible it's you know it's it's not good but it's not horrible right it's probably cluster you know by my estimation probably equals around somewhere like a 10 to 12 percent damage perk depending on how you calculate wolf packs so it's like it's okay it's all right you know it's it's you know baby's first rocket for damage um, that being said, most people probably don't even have one of these anymore, um, and I, I don't think I would recommend it uh, given the easy access to stuff like Hothead from the Vanguard focusing. So I'm going to put it in the D tier. That being said, I do want to note that obviously it is better than something like Ascendancy, but this D tier is a very wide spectrum. It's going to include a lot of weapons from a variety of quality uh, levels. And um, yeah, we're going to be a lot more strict in this tier list, like I said, and uh, this S to C tier is going to be weapons that are actually, you know, worth recommending uh okay <laughs> let's keep going we have heavy gls up next um that's gonna be regnant so regnant um this thing is i don't know man i i want to put it with wendigo but i just don't really see it being up near wendigo because there aren't any void weapons because you know if you're using regnant you're using it for cascade point right let's not get it twisted explosive light is not really a good perk on uh heavy gls um when cascade point exists and if you're using Cascade Point, you're going to want to use a Void weapon. And the thing is, Regnant doesn't really have... There's not really any good Void burst damage weapons in Destiny for damage rotations. So unfortunately, I think Regnant is probably going to go in the C tier. It's like an alternative to Wendigo um, that's craftable. So it's easy to get, but it's like, why would you use this over Wendigo if you have a Wendigo? <laughs> so yeah, it's an alternative uh, that doesn't surge match. And is craftable. Okay, uh, let's keep going. We have Blowout next. Okay, so Blowout. Blowout's a Crucible-focused rocket. Um, it's not bad, right? It's not bad. Um, it has access to field prep. And um, it has Demo Explode, which is okay on a rocket. Not horrible. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put this probably in the possible alternative section. Yeah, I think it really makes sense to put it in the possible alternative section because if you want a rocket, if I'm recommending a rocket to a new player looking to get into endgame content, if they got a blowout before a hothead, I'm not going to force them to grind for a hothead, right? Hothead's probably going to go somewhere in like A or B tier. I think blowout um, is a lot more restricted in terms of the good perks that roll on it, but it is certainly usable. It is a member of the best archetype and, um, you know, it's it's not a, a, a far cry from the from the top rockets that are currently in the game. So I think blowout can be in the C tier and I think I'll be happy with that. Okay, what do we have next? We have Braytech Osprey. Okay, so Braytech Osprey, um, I think it actually goes in the... Hmm, this is kind of weird because this is one of those scenarios, like I said again, where I might put a weapon in a lower tier into a higher tier, um, like relatively speaking. And I think Braytech Osprey does go in the B tier. And the only reason I'm saying this is because Braytech Osprey, I think um, it's good if you like bipod on, a, on like a GM rocket and it's good in void surge GMs and blowout doesn't really have that sort of factor where there's certain scenarios where it is the best, whereas Braytech Osprey does right in that scenario that I just mentioned, in my opinion, if I'm going into a void surge GM and I'm using rockets, Braytech is going to be like my top pick or my my second top pick right compared to like red herring so i think braytech osprey does deserve to be in b tier uh it doesn't really fit the definition of build dependent but again like i said these tier list descriptions are kind of just guides just focus on the actual tiers themselves so i think braytech osprey does deserve to be above blowout in that respect okay moving on uh we have i was about to say bad omens and pull from the d tier we have briar's contempt now, Briar's Contempt, in my opinion, is one of the more overrated weapons when it comes to power weapons in Destiny 2. Um, I wouldn't say it's never used, um, but I certainly wouldn't put it in S or A tier. It's got to be between B and C tier. And um, <clears throat> one thing that I really want to say when I do decide on ranking where Briar's goes that I want to be honest with people about, Briar's is one of those weapons where you have to understand that despite it having surrounded despite it having harmonic resonance and despite it being an aggressive linear it's like um it's like that one scene from star wars where he's like you know uh twice the height you know twice the fall or something i don't, I don't remember what it is but um no that's not what it means no i, I don't remember there, there's, there's there's like this one quote from star wars where it's like you know zero times two is basically still zero okay and a linear 
Linear DPS is so unbelievably low at a base value that no matter how many multipliers you stack on top of it, you stack Enhanced Surrounded, you stack the Better Archetype, you stack Harmonic Resonance, you even stack on the fact that some bosses are crit bosses, and the Ron Linear is still not competitive with the top DPS options in the game. So I just want people to be reminded of that when I place this thing. I'm not going to put in the SRA tier and I'm probably going to put it in the B tier. I think I'm going to put in the B tier. It makes sense to be near a weapon like Caraxis. It is dependent on Surrounded to be good and it is also dependent on Harmonic Resonance to be good. Now, in my opinion, I think Caraxis is more of a relevant weapon, surprisingly so. But, um, you know, Briars is certainly it's not really an alternative. There's some instances where you would want to use Briars over, you know, any other weapon really it's not an alternative in that regard so i hope that makes sense um yeah okay we're gonna move on and talk about bump in the night okay bump in the night um this thing is probably uh the best stasis gm rocket i think um you know cold comfort does get bipod but bump having demo frenzy chill clip for stunning overloads i think that's really nice to have i would rather have I, I think this might come as a surprise to some people, but I, I honestly would rather probably have demo uh, over something like Envious or no reload perk uh, in that first column on Cold Comfort. So yeah, I would probably rather have demo. And of course, both of them are aggressives and, you know, Bump is craftable. Um, you know, Bump has extrovert as well, which is kind of nice. So I think I'm going to go ahead and put Bump, um, you know, somewhere near Cold Comfort when Cold Comfort, you know, gets here. Uh, I don't know if I would put it in activity dependent because it's certainly not good for damage. Um, yeah, I think it goes right next to Osprey. I think that it goes right next to Osprey. I think that kind of makes the most sense. Um, and we'll leave it at that. Okay, next up we have Bequest. So you guys know that I know that you know that Bequest is the highest DPS sword in the game. Now, um, that does put it at the tippity top of S tier in our ranking list in uh, the sword tab. Now, that's not going to do much, though, for it in terms of overall endgame prowess because swords in endgame content, in 99% of endgame content, are not used for damage. They're used for movement. And so, while you will see Bequest and the other half together in swords, that's only focusing on what swords do. If we're focusing on what a power weapon is supposed to do in endgame content, Bequest is going to fall way below the other half because the other half can do both. It can damage mini bosses because it has, you know, it has Eager and it has Frenzy and it has Whirlwind, right? It has damage perks and it is an adaptive, which is good as well, but it also has Eager and Bequest doesn't have Eager. So we're going to go ahead and put Bequest probably somewhere in the B tier. Um, I'm not even going to say it deserves to be an activity dependent because it just doesn't deserve to be in the same tier as Cataphract and Commemoration, to be honest with you. Nowhere near as universal. Bequest is pretty much relevant in one circumstance, and that is if you are spamming Crota. That, that's it. That's all Bequest is good for. So I'm going to put it in the B tier. Uh, probably, you know, it goes somewhere above here. I don't know. Somewhere like next to the machine guns, I think makes the most sense. Um, certainly, yeah, above something like Briars or above something like Osprey. But, um, you know, it, it's in the B tier. It's in the B tier for sure. Okay, let's keep going. We have Cataclysmic next. Um, Cataclysmic, I'm going to be honest with you these days is not used for like anything <laughs> yeah i don't i don't even know if i would consider it a possible alternative it's not really used for anything now again this is kind of a reversal of what i did in my linear fusion tier list where i put cataclysmic above briar's contempt because i believe that cataclysmic fits the role of a linear better than briar's contempt does because, you know, linears are about doing high total damage, sustained damage, precision damage, and Briars doesn't have an ammo return perk. Uh, and Briars doesn't have, what I said in that video, the damage justification for me to put it over S tier, um, or put it into S tier with Cataclysmic. Now, that being said, uh, no one really uses Cataclysmic for anything in endgame content anymore. Um, even in stuff like low man challenges, solo challenges, there are just better options for solo damage, and you're not ever going to dump an entire Cataclysmic reserve dump uh, it takes something like, I don't know, like 40 or more seconds. There's no phase in the game that lasts that long. So Cataclysmic is kind of in the bin. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put in the D tier. Top of D tier, but I'm going to put in the D tier because it's basically never used. Okay, how many heavy weapons have we gone through? It seems like we've gone through, I don't know, maybe 50 or so. So we're about halfway done. Um, yeah, this looks like what? 38 weapons. Yeah. So yeah, we're maybe like, you know, 60% done or something like that. Let's keep going. 
Canis Major is up next. Canis Major has Clown Vorpal. Yeah, no. It's a Heavy Jail, Clown Vorpal. Not even a question. Uh, okay, we have Typhon. Typhon is not horrible, but unfortunately for Typhon in today's sandbox, if you are using a heavy GL, you are using it with the understanding that it needs to be perfect. A heavy GL to be used in today's sandbox needs to have an extremely, extremely potent damage perk. We're talking bait and switch, we're talking surrounded, we're talking cascade point. And explosive light, like I mentioned earlier, is actually not optimal on GLs, unlike rockets where uh, ex one explosive light pickup can affect two thirds to seven ninths of your total reserves. Uh, on a heavy GL, it affects one mag, which is nothing. It's nothing, and um, Typhon becomes much less viable with that in mind. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the D tier. I wouldn't even consider it an alternative, um, because that would go to something like Regnant, and Typhon is just not at the level of Regnant, in my opinion. Okay, Code Duello. Um, Code Duello is a high-impact frame rocket. Uh, I don't really see it being used. I wouldn't even consider it an, it an alternative these days, so I'm just going to put it in the D tier. That's where it belongs, and we're going to move on. Uh, cold comfort. Okay, cold comfort. Uh, cold comfort. I, I I'd say is good enough to put it in activity dependent. Um, I wouldn't even say it's build dependent because it's more dependent on the boss that you're facing, how much time you have, and what sort of environment you are in with your team. Um, whereas something like you know Apex Predator is pretty much you can slap it on anything at any time in any activity and it will be good uh, as long as you're in a team pretty much. And um, cold comfort is just not at that level. Just not at that level. Uh, it's very, very good for boss damage, but it's situational and uh, it's activity dependent. So we're going to put it in the A tier. Uh, let's move to Corsair's Wrath. This thing is like the worst linear in the game. Um, so yeah, D tier. Uh, Crowning Duologue. Okay, so Crowning Duologue. Um, this thing is okay, right? I mean, it has it has dream work, which is it's like the first rocket to have dream work. Uh, so it's kind of interesting in that regard. Now, it is a precision frame, so I just, yeah, I don't, I don't even know why I started talking about that. Yeah, it's just D tier. <laughs> it's just D tier. I wanted to make a case for it because I was like, oh yeah, this is the rocket that has dream work. And then I was like, oh yeah, it's a precision frame. So yeah, don't use it in, in anything. Um, if you're an endgame player. Uh, okay, Zephyr is up next. Zephyr is one of the more unique A tier swords here. Uh, it's an adaptive with relentless surround surrounded whirlwind, but it also has cold steel. And um, that does make it a little bit unique. Uh, if, like I said before, if swords ever come back into prominence as roaming weapons rather than hit crota or do movement weapons, um, you know, Zephyr could have a place, you know. Um, that being said, its place right now is not a significant one. I think I'm going to probably put it in the C tier. Uh, I think it deserves to be over some of these swords because of cold steel, um, because of that unique property. But as of right now, it just, you know, there's not really a reason to use Zephyr in, in endgame content. Um, yeah, okay, let's keep going. We have Eternity's Edge, another Warlock exclusive Vortex Frame Sword, has Relentless Surrounded, but the Surrounded is not enhanced, and so there's pretty much no reason to use this thing ever. So we're going to put it in the D tier next to its friend Death's Razor, which is better than it. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Okay, let's keep going. We have Half Truths. Now, Half Truths, I think, is the definition of a C tier weapon. It is a possible alternative to the movement sword that is the other half. Uh, it is worse than the other half in most respects. There are almost no circumstances where you would want something like Unrelenting or Duelist Trance or Relentless Strikes or Tireless Blade on your Eager Edge sword. Ammo return perks are just not really in the question for people that are doing speed runny slash I want to go through an activity fast in general weapons. So I'm going to put, you know, half truths in the C tier, uh, probably above the rest of these. It's probably more viable than the rest of these, but it's still a C tier weapon. Regardless, it is indeed a possible alternative. Okay, next up we have um, Hero of Ages. Yeah, Hero of Ages is a vortex frame and it has no damage perks from what I remember. It has on guard. Wow, it has on guard. Anyways, D tier. Um, Razor's Edge is another Vortex Frame, except it doesn't even have Whirlwind, it has Frenzy, so D tier. Um, Steel Sybil, Z14. This is an adaptive with Relentless Whirlwind, and like the other ones that have Relentless Whirlwind, I put it in the D tier, so that's where it's gonna go. Uh, the other half? The other half, um, given the current sandbox, uh, in Destiny 2, uh, we are met with a, an occasion, like we have been for the last two years, where abilities are so strong, that you you guys have probably seen uh, people like Salta Greppo and Vendetta speed through pretty much every GM in the game on three strand titans. 
and Eager Edge Swords. So, you know, I don't really think there's an argument to be made that even in activities where survival is important, that an Eager Edge Sword does not provide some value. So I would say it is deserving of the S tier. It, it does deserve to be considered universally good. Uh, Eager Edge Swords can be used at every level of play. Now, that being said, you do have to pick your battles um, because Apex Predator, obviously, um, there are some bosses where, you know, Apex Predator is not going to be the choice and uh, some places where rockets are not going to be the choice in general. But given how dominant movement swords are, given how dominant rockets are, I think it only makes sense to really put them in the S tier. Sure, they don't meet the definition of universal down to a T, but, you know, nothing in this game really does. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in the S tier because I do consider them to be universally useful. Okay, next up we have Caretaker. Now, Caretaker, um, Caretaker is craftable. It has Relentless Surrounded, and uh, you know, if you are on uh, a Solar subclass and you want to proc Mono this season, uh, that's not going to factor into my ranking here, but just a side note, uh, you will do more damage than Bequest on Caretaker. Um, and assuming you cap your frames and you're hitting your strikes, you're not going through the boss, uh, and you have Surrounded, this will also be better than Lament. So for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the C tier. It is a possible alternative. I think I'm just going to like put it somewhere around here. And the other good thing about Caretaker is that it's not class restricted. So any class can go ahead and pick up a Caretaker on a Solar subclass this season and do slightly less damage than Bequest, provided that you have Surrounded. So I'm going to go ahead and put that right here. And uh, I think that's a fair assessment. Okay, next up. Oh, also, one more thing I want to mention. Caretaker also does have Noble Deeds, which is like a free charge rate increase if you're healing your teammates during like Crota damage, which you will be. So yeah. Um, pretty much that. I think I did underrate Caretaker in my other tier list, um, so hopefully this sword rework, if you guys haven't seen it already, um, this tier list revamp has made some of the Caretaker lovers out there a little bit more satisfied. Okay, next up we have Avalanche. So Avalanche is basically the alternative to Unwavering Duty in the B tier. Um, I think it is good enough perk-wise to have a spot in the C tier. Um, that being said, I think it is definitely worse than stuff like, um, like Terminus Horizon, right? Uh, it's probably worse than all the swords too, like most of them. Yeah, um, this thing has, probably like right here. Yeah, this thing has drastically reduced reserves uh, for whatever reason. I think it's the only machine gun on this list that has reserves that are this tanked. That being said, heavy ammo is pretty easy to come by in most activities. Most activities you're not really going to be running out of machine gun ammo if you're using this thing effectively. And Dawning Surprise is a little nice, you know, cherry on top for a weapon like this that's going to be getting a fair amount of kills. Now, that being said, you know, it's definitely strictly an alternative. It doesn't hold a candle to Unwavering Duty. Unwavering Duty has uh, greater diversity in its perks, has normal reserves, and is just a better weapon overall. So that's why we're going to put Avalanche in the C tier. All right, next up, we have Dimensional Hypotrachoid. Now, uh, I'm not going to mince words here. This thing, after being patched for Riven DPS, has basically no place in this game. Uh, now, for being a compressed waveframe, it actually doesn't do that horrible DPS compared to normal heavy GLs like Precisions, uh, not Precision, sorry, like Adaptives and Rapids, but that's not going to save it from being put in the D tier. It has Vorpal as its best perk, and um, yeah, we're just going to put it in the D tier and leave it at that. Next up, we have Circular Logic. Circular Logic, I believe, is the, yeah, it's the only Strand Machine Gun in the game right now, available from Neo Muna. And um, that's not going to save it, though. <laughs> its best perks are Envious and Tricorn, or Envious and Demo, uh, neither of which is particularly enticing. Nanotech Tracer Rockets is not a bad origin trade, but I'd much rather have it on a much better machine gun. So I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the D tier. There is no saving grace for uh, Circular Logic if we're talking raw endgame potency. Okay, next up we have Fire and Forget. Fire and Forget? Um, I think it was like the only B tier, yeah, it's the only B tier linear that I placed, uh, on this tier list. And, um, yeah, I don't really think there's any place you would use Fire and Forget. If I'm going to put Cataclysmic in the D tier, you bet your ass I'm putting Fire and Forget in the D tier too. So we're going to put that right there. Uh, not much to say about that. And, um, yeah, we're left with 20 weapons. Let's keep going. We have Heretic next. Heretic is an aggressive frame arc rocket with field lasting slash cluster. Um, and while that is not a horrible, you know damage configuration in endgame content number one your ass is generally not manually reloading a rocket and number two even if you were this is not the best rocket to do it with so we're gonna put it in the d tier no reason to ever use this thing okay next up we have hezen vengeance now hezen vengeance is really dripping on the edge of a and b tier here uh in this tier list it's definitely at the bottom uh it has a mediocre damage perk in lasting impression uh, but it does offer an overflow auto swap which is kind of interesting it's kind of like having recon plus auto on a rocket of your choice and um, it also does have demo 
for you know gms i suppose which is not bad you know overflow demo is a role that i used in gms uh, occasionally uh, when Arms Dealer was Solar Surge back um, in the seasons when Hezen was more relevant. Uh, but that being said, I don't think this thing deserves to be in D tier, but I also don't think it deserves to be in B tier. I think it is a possible alternative. It has the right mix of perks to do okay damage and to do okay, um, you know, GM roam type content, but uh, it's really lacking a good damage perk and it's really lacking a good roam perk like Bipod or Envious uh, to really be put up there. So I'm going to put it in the C tier, bottom of C tier. If a new player were to pick one of these up with like auto lasting or like overflow demo, I would say it's like not horrible, but it's certainly not good enough to be any higher than the absolute bottom of C tier. Okay, next up, I have to scroll down every time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zoom out a little bit. Uh, hopefully that's all right with you guys. I'm going to zoom out quite a bit, actually. Yeah, there we go. Now we can see the whole list. Um, next up, we have Huskow. Huskow. Uh, Huskao is a, an arc adaptive, and this thing was used for like Riven Lomans for like field prep cluster. Uh, that being said, there is much, much, much better rockets than Huskao these days um, for even Riven Mouth DPS. So I'm going to go ahead and put this thing in the D tier. I don't think there's any reason to ever use this thing. And we're going to leave it at that. And we're going to keep going and talk about Laser Painter. Um, for whatever reason, there are some people who, in my comment section, believe that this linear is uh, good for anything. I, I'm not sure why, but um, yeah, this is a D-tier weapon. Yeah, D-tier weapon. Um, nothing special about it. Uh, yeah, again, the bar to clear here is being better than Cataclysmic, and there is no precision linear that is better than Cataclysmic, so yeah. <laughs> okay, let's keep going and talk about our friend Palmyra. Palmyra B is a precision frame rocket. So I'm gonna just move it over here and we're gonna move on. Uh, Red Herring. Red Herring is an adaptive void rocket. Um, this is my first slash second pick for void surge GMs if you're using a rocket build. And uh, I think it's it competes with Braytech. Uh, I've had some people in my comment section recently kind of put forth the argument that Braytech is a better rocket than Red Herring in GMs. And I, you know, I don't necessarily disagree. It's, uh, they're pretty close in my eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and put them right next to each other in our friendly B tier. You may see these two swap once I, uh, really put my nose to the grindstone and think about it. Uh, again, you know, they're right next to each other though. They're both equally, um, deserving of my love. So yeah, let's move on and let's talk about uh, Reed's Regret. Reed's Regret, like I said, worse than Cataclysmic, even with the Valley Boost, we're just gonna slap it in the D tier and move on. Uh, we have Roar of the Bear. Roar of the Bear is an Iron Banner high impact solar rocket. Um, now this thing does have Demo Lasting and Demo Cluster, which isn't horrible, but unfortunately, uh, if you wanted a sort of Demo GM rocket, Hezen is better. Hezen has better uh gm roam perks and even though it doesn't have i mean technically hasn't has cluster too but it just has better roam perks and it's a better frame it's a free plus 10 percent over this rocket there's no reason to ever use roar of the bear okay oh, my voice is gonna just give at the end of this video anyways royal entry royal entry uh this thing is a precision rocket back before precisions were nerfed this thing was kind of goaded had field clown uh that being said these days is this thing gonna come anywhere close to an adaptive or an aggressive for damage? Is it going to come anywhere close to Braytech or Red Herring for GMs? No. So this thing is a D tier weapon. We're going to put in the D tier. No reason to tell a new light to go back and focus one of these. No purpose whatsoever. Let's move on to Sail Spy Pitch Class. A lot of people were also saying Sail Spy Pitch Class was good for some reason. No, no. This thing is never used in endgame content. If you want an arc linear, use Storm Chaser. So yeah, this thing is just never used in endgame content. No ammo return perk. No reason to be anywhere above D tier. Uh, Semio. Okay, so Semio Titian. Semio Titian's up next. Um, this thing is okay. It's all right. Uh, I think in GMs it has possibly some use, but again, Strand Surge is, you know, if I'm not mistaken, all GMs have two surges active at a time. And uh, if you want to pick between this thing and another rocket that has a different surge than Strand, I would strongly strongly advise you pick the other one so i'm gonna go ahead and put this thing probably in the c tier i'm gonna put this thing in the c tier next to blowout um it does deserve a shout and if you want a gm rocket i would say it is a valid alternative for a new light to maybe you know put some work into um given you know bray tech is not as accessible and you know uh, red herring is pretty accessible too so that's why it's in the c tier not in b tier okay 
We have Shining Sphere next. Shining Sphere D tier, you know, no damage perk. Not worth talking about. Moving on. We have Sleepless. Again, even worse than Shining Sphere. Just put in the D tier, move on. Storm Chaser. Okay. Uh, Storm Chaser is not on this page. It's not a rocket. What am I thinking? Storm Chaser actually does see some use, some use in stuff like solo GMs, even post nerf. So I think Storm Chaser is deserving of a spot above the D tier. Um, now, where are we going to put that above the D tier? I think, um, I don't even know if I would put it. Uh, you know what? I'll put it right underneath Briars. I think I'll put it right underneath Briars. Um, there are some instances, some very rare instances where you might use Storm Chaser in like a GM. Um, but those are really, really contrived instances. I'm not even sure if I would put it in B tier, to be honest with you, because Briars has some relevant contexts that are not restricted to like solo GMs, right? Whereas like Storm Chaser is very much so stuck in that niche. Um, I don't know, man. I really don't know. You know what? I, I will leave my commentary in here and let you guys decide. Storm Chaser is somewhere here. It's somewhere between um, B and C. Okay, Sub-Zero Salvo, horrible, horrible rocket, don't need to talk about that, D tier. Taipan, again, if we're putting reeds in the D tier, we're putting Taipan in the D tier. Uh, Tarantula. Okay. Uh, hothead, Hothead. Um, hothead is the reason why Blowout is in C tier, otherwise Blowout would probably be higher. Hothead is basically like Blowout, except new lights can focus it, just like Blowout. And it has much, much better perks. It has stuff like Clown. It has stuff like Tracking for GMs. It has Explosive Light, like Blowout does. But it also has access to Demo Field Auto, which make it, you know, usable for damage if a new light wants to use it for damage. And it's also very good for GMs as well. It's the best Arc Rocket for GMs that we currently have. So we're going to slap it. Where are we going to slap it? Where are we going to slap it? We're going to slap it not in the D tier. We're going to slap it uh, probably in the A tier. I think it deserves to be in the A tier. Uh, I think Hothead's probably more relevant than Cataphract. So I'm going to put it in the A tier. We're going to put it right there. All right. We have two weapons left. And unfortunately, none of them are going to be cracking into the top tiers. Threaded Needle, an OG from Season of the Chosen. Remember when everyone was running, you know, Field Prep Vorpal, Field Prep Frenzy on this thing, doing solo GMs with it with Particle. Um, however, you know, this thing is uh, not good. Not good by today's standards at all. We're going to put it in the D tier and leave it there. And finally, we have Tomorrow's Answer. Now, some of you were saying, you know, Tomorrow's Answer has Field Prep Clown on its old roll. Like I've said to you before, that is worth shouting out. So I'm giving it its flowers right now. However, this thing is unfortunately uh, in its newest iteration stuck with auto lasting and auto cluster. And it is a high impact frame, which means if you want to use it in a damage rotation, you're always taking a minus 10% on top of these very suboptimal damage perks. So this thing is just really not worth considering at a baseline level. And I'm going to leave it at that. So Tomorrow's Answer is going to be slapped in the D tier. Um, now let's go ahead and look at some of these, these, these ratings. Um, I think going forward, I'm probably not going to use this A tier and B tier system anymore. I think build dependent is a very restrictive term and it uh, doesn't really represent like half the weapons in this tier. Uh, but that being said, I hope this kind of still makes sense to you guys. S tier is really like the dominant picks. If you're a new player, what should you gravitate towards if you're going into end game content? Obviously Apex Predator, obviously uh, the other half. In my head, a sign of a good tier list is me looking at the top tiers and being like, yeah, if I'm a new player and I want to do like the majority of endgame content, what should I get my hands on? Boom, Apex. Boom, an Eager Sword. Maybe Cold Comfort. Boom, a Commemoration. Uh, boom, a Hothead. You know, great for ArcGMs. Uh, boom, Cataphract, right? Like those are just so obvious standouts. And I think that really means that this tier list, uh, I think, largely succeeded in its job. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, don't be, uh, you know, don't go too hard on me for some of these tier selections. Like some of them probably do deserve to be swapped with others, but uh, I tried my best to do a better job than I did with my special weapon tier list. I think a lot of you guys will find this to be a lot more, um, I don't know, accurate representative of the current sandbox with heavy weapons. And, uh, I hope, uh, yeah, I hope this made sense to a lot of you guys. And, uh, yeah, after this, we're going to be talking about exotic weapons. I'm going to be ranking those soon. That's going to require a lot of work, a lot of consultation. Uh, I'm going to try my best to do that topic justice. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.